go to the leg again. How good was the UFC champ? Massive KOs. Israel Adesanya. One of the top strikers in mixed martial art, both offensively and defensively, is largely recognized as Adesanya. Still fighting. Israel. Israel Adesanya has defeated some elite attackers in the past, most notably Anderson Silva and Robert Whitaker, but no one has yet to equal his technical proficiency. Can Alex Pereira defeat him? Let's look closely at the past. There was a jumping knee, and now oh! he's out. And present of this UFC champ, Israel Adesanya. God, the spray of blood. Oh, they can stop this fight. Adesanya is currently undefeated in the middleweight category of the UFC. His lone defeat occurred in March 2021, when he moved up to the light heavyweight class and was defeated by Jan Blahovic via a points decision. Adesanya has a record of 23-1 in mixed martial arts competition, with 15 of his wins coming through knockout. There is a widespread consensus that Israel Adesanya will suffer a knockout loss in his upcoming defense of his UFC middleweight title. The controversial assertion was made by Henry Cejudo, who is a former UFC champion in two different weight classes. Cejudo feels that Adesanya Brazilian rival Alex Pereira possesses greater punching power for a battle that will most likely be decided on the feet rather than on the ground. On November 13th at UFC 281 in New York City, Adesanya will make his championship defense. Barrera has already beaten Adesanya twice in kickboxing, once by unanimous points in 2016, and then through a left hook knockout the following year. This makes this fight a difficult one for the New Zealander, who was born in Nigeria. He won titles in the middleweight and light heavyweight division of kickboxing for the Glory organization, and now Pereira is making a name for himself in the mixed martial arts community. In the ring, he has a record of 6-1. Distance is able to avoid that left kick. And his current unbeaten streak in the UFC spans three fights and includes two performances that earned him fight of the night honors. Cejudo, a former Olympic wrestling champion who won the bantamweight and flyweight titles in the UFC during a career that saw him go 16-2 up until the year 2020. He's thunder, take a stop. That Pereira has a more well rounded game than Adesanya does, and that this difference could prove significant at Madison Square Garden. On his channel, Cejudo stated, I think Alex is going to get it. Because of this, becoming well rounded is really crucial if you want to have a successful career as a mixed martial artist. You're more than just a striker who can also defend well. Because what happens if you face another good striker who is better than you at striking? You're unable to take him down because that's more or less the situation we find ourselves in right now with Pereira and Adesanya. Alexander has stronger striking, despite the fact that Israel is a very good player. The second time they fought, he defeated him by knocking him out, and the first time they fought, he won. If this fight is fought standing up, I have no choice but to go with Pereira. I knocked out Pereira in the first round. My impression is that he has a greater variety and other characteristics of a similar sort. When I lie, you must punish me. But the American, Jared Cannonier, who was the most recent fighter to be defeated by Adesanya, thinks that the New Zealander still has a chance to win against Pereira because of his greater MMA experience. No losses. He's down. Six feet four is just Cannonier said to Helen Yee that in terms of Adesanya's relative amount of time inside the cage, it most certainly favors Izzy more. He's been here longer. It is undoubtedly unique due to the fact that he has competed in all of these five-round championship fights against the greatest competitors in our sport. He unquestionably possesses the experience necessary in that area. Situations, despite being the smaller man. Cannonier, who fought Adesanya to a draw before losing via unanimously decision in Las Vegas in July, believes that the New Zealanders' attacking game has also undergone some subtle changes since he left kickboxing. Cannonier's belief is based on the fact that Adesanya won the fight after going the distance. According to Cannonier, he's changed his kickboxing style more for mixed martial arts. Alex's posture still has something that every single fight Joe, that he has kickboxing foundation to it. It's not to suggest that it's going to hurt him in any way, but in terms of MMA, it's something that might be used against him. Regarding that particular point, I believe that Israel has the upper hand. Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira head to toe break. Pereira's most dangerous. He's making Israel. Israel Adesanya, the current UFC middleweight champion, is one of MMA's most powerful forces. But he will soon face Alex Pereira, a huge Brazilian knockout specialist who many fans doubt can defeat him. It'll take place this Saturday in the main event of UFC 281, with the Manhattan skyline serving as the backdrop. 
and it has the focus of the MMA community, unlike the other fights this year. Wild exchanges is where Pereira's. However, this will not be Adesanya and Pereira's first encounter. In the glory kickboxing ring, the two middleweights fought each other twice. Pereira triumphed both times, first by unanimous decision in China in 2016, then by knockout in Sao Paulo the following year. This Saturday, many experts believe the Brazilian to repeat the feat. Under MMA standards, it's obvious a very different matchup. The possibility of a grapple still exists, but the mere knowledge that it does changes everything. Israel Adesanya has defeated some elite attackers in the past, most noticeably Anderson Silva and Robert Whittaker, but no one has yet to equal his technical proficiency. Dan Allen Alex Pereira. Additionally, the Brazilian has absurdly strong stopping power, with his left hook being especially lethal. Inquire about it with Sean Strickland. With his technique, timing, and plan, Adesanya has defeated major knockout threats in the past. However, it will be a difficult task against Pereira, who has not only defeated him by decision over nine minutes, but also knocked him out. The numbers show that a challenging matchup, this is for Adesanya on the feet. Pereira really outperforms him in a couple significant areas. Brazilian strikes more times per minute, and their accuracy rate is better, 60% to 49%. He receives more blows per minute than Adesanya. That's 3.36 to 2.67. But overall, his striking defense rate is only somewhat lower, 58% to 59%. The power disparity is another factor. Five of Pereira's six MMA victories have been via knockout or technical knockout, 83% compared to Adesanya's 15 to 23 triumph, 65%. On paper, the striking matchup appears to be fairly close, but according to our projections, Adesanya will have a tiny disadvantage over the duration of the fight. You won't hear that statement very often, to be honest. Submission. Together, Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira have fought in 31 MMA matches, but we have seldom ever seen either fighter use his submission game. That's quite impressive and shows how proficient both of the guys are at striking. Unfortunately, that makes it very impossible to predict who will be in control should the UFC 281 main event see a flurry of submission attempts. Simply put, there isn't much tape to watch. Once more, the statistics support this. In the octagon, Adesanya has tried 0.2 submissions every 15 minutes, whereas Pereira has not. Neither man has ever prevailed through submission outside of the octagon. One distinction that must be made is that although Pereira doesn't even appear to be chasing belt levels, Adesanya is a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under Andre Galvao, who is still one of the most successful instructors in the grappling world. Obviously, there's no practical reason for the Brazilian to be training in a gi at this time, and belts only really matter to a certain extent in an MMA match. But it's safe to assume that Adesanya has been studying submissions for longer. That's pretty much the information we have. But hey, it's something. Wrestling. Due to the lack of MMA video evidence showing either man engaging in offensive wrestling, it is just as impossible to identify who has the advantage in this contest in terms of wrestling, as it was, to determine who had the advantage in submission. You guessed it, the statistics once more support this assertion. In the octagon, neither man has ever tried a takedown. However, we've already witnessed some of their defensive grappling. In his lone MMA defeat to Jan Blachowicz at light heavyweight, Adesanya was brought to the ground three times and held more than seven minutes. In his earlier this year unanimous decision victory over Robert Whittaker, he was also brought down four times and held the advantage for just over three and a half minutes. In the UFC, Pereira has also been knocked to the ground twice, once each during his victories over Andreas Michaelides and Bruno Silva. Although we've seen that both guys are susceptible to takedowns, we're unsure of whether either of them can actually pull off a takedown when it counts. There isn't much information available, but once more, we're going to give Adesanya the advantage because he has been involved in MMA competitions for a little longer, has fought in more than three times as many matches, and has spent more time on the mats with top-tier fighters. What do you think of this video? Tell us in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.